Hello, everyone. I pray again that you understand and know the promises that the Father has made us. They're precious and magnificent. We're going to talk about those in a few days because Peter gives us that wonderful phrase, the precious and magnificent promises. But today I'm going to talk about another promise that the Father gives us. When I travel, I travel with a couple of things. One thing that is very important to me when I travel is my passport. Because I am sometimes in and out of the country or I don't have the latest doodad for, to let people know that I'm a citizen. So what do I do? I grab my passport. Those people where I belong. The next thing is, the, in the musical version of Frank L. Baum's wonderful story, The Wizard of Oz, stage play The Wiz, there's an incredible song called I Wish I Were Home. And the whole idea behind that song is, as Dorothy sings it, she is lonely and afraid, vulnerable. Things are happening to her. Her life. <laughs> so what does that have to do with home? It's the same thing for each and every one of us. We look in the world around us, as imperfect as it is, and we long for home. I think Ecclesiastes 3.11 helps us here. But the Father has placed eternity in each of our hearts because we long for heaven and home. Now, this isn't just, let's describe heaven. No, there's plenty of descriptions of heaven. But what's the promise of heaven? Oh, Jesus says, don't, don't let your hearts be troubled. But believe in me, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come back that you may be there with me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Why does Jesus make that promise? Because he wants us to know that we, yes, will be with him, but this is not our home. I mentioned my passport. I let people, you know, I've got to go through passport control. Sometimes you check into a country, sometimes you check out of the country. That passport lets people know that I am an American citizen. My passport to heaven is that I believe in Jesus Christ. I was talking with someone the other day about heaven. And he says, you got your wristband? A wristband? He says, yeah. You know, you do good work, so you're going to be able to get in? I said, oh, no, no. You misunderstand. I believe in Jesus Christ. And because I believe in Jesus Christ, I am forgiven of my sin. And since I'm forgiven of my sin, I get to inherit the promises that God has made. And one of the promises God has made is heaven. Heaven is a place prepared for us. It's not just happenstance. It is prepared for us. Jesus has designed it. God has made it that we are there with him. There are a couple of witnesses of scripture, in scripture of heaven. The first one is Ezekiel. Ezekiel measures the city. God says measure it. So he takes out and measures it. And then he gives this wonderful name. Oh, mercy. God is there. Why? Because that's where God is. We get to go and live with God. The next one is this. It is Stephen in Acts chapter 2. Stephen is stoned. But what does he do? He looks into heaven. Sees the Father. A welcome home signal. Heaven is a very real place. Of late, there's been several movies and books about heaven. Heaven is for real. Heaven come home. All of these things. Heaven is a very real place. The next one is, the, is uh, John in Revelation. I know people read Revelation and they get all afraid and everything. But understand, when you read the book of Revelation, there is a blessing there. Blessed are those who read and heed these pages. Why? 
because the Father is trying to encourage us, not just about what's going to happen in the second coming, but the Father is also encouraging us that we have a new home, a new heaven, a new earth, one that is not spoiled. Back to Dorothy in her song, I wish I were home. Home is a place filled with love and understanding, caring. That's what we all long for. And the Father says, when I call you home, that is what you're going to receive, my love and my understanding. Now, we stumble sometimes and we wonder about this. Well, Jesus says, I prepared a place for you. I've gone on ahead of you. I will meet you there as a good host. He comes to meet us and greet us. Understand this, folks. You belong in heaven. Jesus has come that you may have life, have it abundantly, that you may have life forever, that you may resurrect from the dead, a resurrection to life. That life is living with the Father. Dorothy again, I wish I was home. I'm lonely. I'm afraid, I'm fearful. But in heaven, there's no tears, there's no crying. There's the joy of the presence of the Father's presence and each other. But there in heaven, you don't have to worry about being accepted because many of us feel rejected. We want someone just to accept us. In heaven, you are accepted. Often we feel rejected, unwanted, unwelcomed. In heaven, we are welcomed. We're welcomed by the Father, by the Son, by the Spirit, by all who are there. One person has written and says, every day in heaven is like a homecoming. There's always somebody coming that you've missed, you loved, you want them to know. Why? Because they are living there, waiting for us. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is very real. One of my mentors described heaven as invisible reality. We don't see it, but we know it's there. We know it's there not just because of Ezekiel, not just because of Stephen, not just because of John wrote in Revelation, but because Jesus says it is there. I am the bread that has come down from heaven. I am he that has come down from heaven, that we understand and know the Father. We don't become Christians just to get to heaven. We become Christians that we may know and walk with the Father. Walk and know him intimately. Heaven is just our inheritance. The mansion is ours. Why? Because we belong there. Jesus has led us there and calls us there. What's your mansion going to look like? I don't know. That's between you and God. But the Father says, I have guaranteed heaven for you. Because heaven is a very real place. Two stories. One is Joni Erickson Tata tells a story of a Down syndrome young man. And they're talking about heaven. He gets excited. He says, hey, let's go. Why? My dad is there. The other is this. A gentleman writes a letter to Charles Fuller. Charles Fuller is going to preach on heaven the next week. And so he writes the letter and says, Mr. Fuller, I'm not sure I may get there. But I want you to know that I have owned some property in heaven. The title can't be transferred, can't be sold, can't be speculated on. It is mine. I purchased it years and years ago. And Jesus is holding it for me. Because years and years ago, I received him as my savior. That gentleman didn't live to hear Dr. Fuller's message on heaven. But he really did. 
Because though he fell asleep here, he was alive there in his mansion, listening to Dr. Fuller talk about heaven. Jesus, thank you for the promise of heaven. The Lord, it is there. It is our true home that our passport is the blood that you shed for us, our receiving you. So, Father, thank you for the precious gift of the inheritance of heaven. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.